I have in fair foster hair today. Fair foster hair is beautiful hair. What's this going? What's this? I like it. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Um, today I had a, did an Instagram poll and it was between how to get over a breakup and how to keep your independence in a relationship, how to keep your independence in a relationship one. I will do the other video eventually, but um, that's what one. This video is sponsored by um, BetterHelp. And the reason I wanted to do this video um, and I wanted it to be sponsored by BetterHelp is because BetterHelp is just like an incredible service um, and I wanted you guys to be aware of it. BetterHelp is basically an, an affordable online counseling service. So you can have access to fully trained and licensed therapists and counselors that are LGBTQ friendly and you can kind of pick between like religious and non-religious ones. Like there's just a ton of options. Um, therapy can be like crazy expensive. It can be kind of awkward to like find out where to start, how to start, who to go to. Um, I feel like it's sometimes kind of difficult to, to find a, a therapist that works for you um, and like where to get recommendations. I feel like that's like the biggest struggle with finding someone is where to start. Um, what's also great about this is like it's fully online. You can use your phone or your computer. And so if you like travel a lot, like I do, and you can't really have someone in the city because you're just gonna like miss sessions all the time. This is great because you can do it anytime, any place. Super affordable. It's between 35 and $65 a week for unlimited sessions, which is like basically unheard of. Therapy is usually very expensive. You can kind of just like log on whenever and, and do it whenever you're feeling like you need to. And the other thing I really like about it is that sometimes it's kind of hard to open up in person to someone, you know, like sitting there face to face. So this kind of gives you that like, screen i feel like everyone is more comfortable saying things online than they are in person so if you're finding it hard to like open up in person this could be also like a great opportunity for you it also like there's no travel time you just open your computer and you're good to go so that's better help um and definitely i'm going to be talking about therapy so i thought that this was like a perfect uh a perfect video for them to sponsor so thank you better help for sponsoring this video all the information will be linked down below if you're looking to check it out okay so um kind of breaking this down into like three points um and then i'm going to answer some questions at the end that people had sent me because i feel like they probably um are questions that a lot of people have okay so um i'm just gonna give you a little background into my relationship history i've been in four relationships in my life, um, two in high school, one of those overlapped into university, one in university, and then after university is the one I'm currently in with Joey, who's over there. <laughs> um, I definitely wasn't always the most independent in relationships. I was very dependent, um, had very unhealthy relationships growing up, had a lot of daddy issues. If you no, uh, my parents are divorced and like my dad's an alcoholic. So it just like kind of just bred some, some daddy issues that I had to work through. I've gone to a therapist, I've seen counselors, I've seen therapists. I feel like now this is the most healthy relationship that I've, I've been in in my life. So the main like thesis of this video is basically that to maintain independence and have a health in a relationship and have a healthy relationship is that you need to take care of yourself first. Both people need to take care of themselves first. Okay, so um, my first point is is take care of yourself. So that's physically and mentally. Joey and I in the mornings, Joey and I like say hello, we say good morning, and then we take about an hour to ourselves to read and to meditate and to like do our own things. And that's like very healthy for both of us because we get to work on our mental health. We also go to the gym for an hour. So that's like two hours out of the day that we are fully working on ourselves. It's usually the first two hours of the day as well. It's silly to think that you can go, you have to go to the gym to work on your your physical health every single day, but that your mental health is just something that is just given to you. You, you definitely have to like work on your mental health. And so we make that a priority because if we didn't do that, we would probably have a really awful relationship. We would probably fight all the time. There's like a a ton of things on the internet and just I think is a very well-known fact that when <laughs> I'm really frustrated right now <laughs> I think there's a lot of stuff on the internet and just like it's just a well-known fact that like when people get into relationships they stop taking care of themselves and I think that's like the biggest 
I'm really bad at words today, like they're just not flowing, but it's just the biggest, it's the most detrimental thing you can do for yourself and for your relationship is just stop taking care of yourself. Like why, why when you were single, you worked out and, and took care of your mental health and did your own thing. But when you're in a relationship, everything changes. That's just like not how it should be. You need to put yourself first and take care of yourself. So if you're, if you're struggling with things, Go see a therapist, sign up for better help, do that. Take care of mental, meditate, read books. Like you have to do things that, that are good for you mentally and physically. Because obviously when you take care of your physical health, it also helps your mental health. But if you're not there, if you're not stable mentally, it's really hard to like give into, give to a relationship. That person can't like, f can't fill voids for you. I think a lot of people when they go into relationships that other person starts taking care of them but you still need to take care of yourself so that you can take care of them and then they can also take care of themselves and there's just everyone taking care of each other. You know what I'm saying? And yourself. The second point is maintaining your previous relationships. I've definitely done this. Um, I think every person, you're basically your first relationship, I feel like everyone goes through it where you just kind of like throw away your friends and you are fully just hanging out with the person that you're with all the time and i think that is like the biggest mistake ever dependency is never cute it isn't healthy um and you need to maintain your relationships because first of all they're your friends like you chose to be friends with these people for a reason and they don't deserve you throwing them away because you found someone that you're romantically involved with second of all you can't do everything with the person that you're with. Joey and I spend a lot of time together, but we make sure that we have nights where we hang out with our friends and see our friends and do our own thing because yes, we have a life together, but we also have separate lives and we're also separate people. So we deserve to nurture those relationships. Friendships are just like relationships. You need to take care of them. You need to treat them as if they were a romantic relationship. You need to work on them. It's not fair to just expect people to always be around for you, for you if you're not gonna if you're not gonna hang out with them and give them what they need. You know, like it's a it's a two way street. Also goes into Joey and I take nights off. We aren't living together, so it's easier right now. But we take nights off, and that's super healthy for our relationship. Having the night to ourselves, like. I'm an only child, I have been by myself for a long time and those nights to myself are, are just really important to me. Um, you kind of like miss the person, but you also get to do the things that maybe you don't do when they're around. Like on my nights off, I usually like have dinner with friends or my parents. Um, and then I like do hair masks and I watch shitty TV shows and I, stay up way later than Joey wants to stay up, you know? Like, I just do the things that I want to do. And not saying I can't, I can obviously do that when Joey's around, but like, it's just, you just want those nights to yourself to like, do your own thing. Now, when, and if we start living together, we'll have to figure out what works for us then. But for right now, the nights off are, are really important to us. Also, like seeing your friends isn't, like, you need to make sure you're seeing your friends by yourself. I think that's the most, like you can see your friends together if you have like mutual friends and stuff, but like, you need to have nights where you get to like be an independent person and go out and do your own thing by yourself. This kind of like goes into my third point, which is maintain your own life and your own hobbies. So maintaining your own life and your own hobbies is like the most, I guess all these points are like the most important, but you don't have to do things just with the person you're romantically with. If you have a hobby that you wanna do and they don't like that or they don't enjoy that, go do it by yourself. I feel like my classic example is like pottery. If you if you really love pottery and your person doesn't want to do pottery, go take a pottery class by yourself. Or if you like sports, go to a sports game with your friends or go play sports or go play hockey or ten like Joey plays tennis. Joey goes and plays tennis with his friends all the time. You need to main I don't know how to play tennis, by the way. You need to maintain your own hobbies and your own life. Not only is it like super healthy, but it also gives you more to talk about. You come home from the, your sports activity, you come home from your hobby, your class, your workout class, whatever you do, and you can sit there and tell your significant other how much fun you had, who you met, why it sucked, whatever it is, like you can have more to talk about, which is always a plus. You need to try and maintain who you were before your relationship in your relationship. Believe it or not, I just filmed, or. We just did an entire photo shoot. We just, my camera died and then we did an entire photo shoot with the model. Um, I think 
we're talking about having your own life and having your own hobbies like extremely important in a relationship you can't depend on the person to entertain you all the time and to be your hobby like the person that you're dating shouldn't be your hobby you need to have your own life and your own hobbies to you know fulfill you and make you happy and things that you enjoy to do doing things that you enjoy doing without them they don't need to be in every aspect of your life i think that's just the, the main point is the person that you're dating is doesn't need to be a part of every single aspect of your life like totally contributes to relationship health like having your own things having your own space having your own hobbies having your own friends like y again you need to have your own you have your life as a individual and then you have a life together and that's you need to maintain that life outside of your your person fourth point which is like a very like a cliche but it is so so true it's communication talking about things <laughs> is very important so communication most cliche point but like the most true in regards to relationship health and longevity you should be able to talk to your partner about like anything that's going on in your relationship or anything in general really but like I don't ever feel nervous or scared to talk to Joey about anything. I'm never maliciously saying anything, right? So like, there's no reason to be offended by it. I'm just telling him how I feel and I can't, he, he can't really be offended by how I feel and I can't really be offended how, if he feels something. We have to have open discussions about things that might be tough or, you know, might be hard, but I never feel scared or uncomfortable to have a conversation with him because i know he's not going to judge me or i feel like that's like a really key thing is you should never feel scared or uncomfortable to have a conversation with your partner you guys are a team you're together in this you're both trying your best to make this relationship work and conversations are extremely important i think i've said this before that like we had a conversation pretty early on in our relationship that like we both know that if we ever broke up like we wouldn't it wouldn't be like the end of the world <laughs> and i think i said this in my other video and all the people a lot of people were like a little turned some people were a little turned off by it but the point is that like if we broke up like he knows that or i know i think it's more important to say that i know that i wouldn't like die and you know my life wouldn't be over i know that i would eventually like get on my feet move on and I'm happy and fulfilled all by myself, just like Joey's happy and fulfilled all by himself. And our relationship is just like an add on kind of. And if we ever broke up, he would eventually move on actually. And I'm not offended or scared of that. It's almost a nice feeling. He, I know that he was happy and fulfilled all by himself. I was happy and fulfilled all by myself. And then our relationship is just something of us coming together and like choosing to be together. So those are my four, four points on keeping your independence in a relationship. I wanted to answer some questions because I think that they were really good questions that um, a lot of people will probably benefit from. The first question is my husband needs space and I'm not the type of person that needs space. I need constant reassurance and love and he's a very independent person who wants to do his own things. I feel hurt by it and, and I don't know what to do. So we've kind of touched on this a little bit, but I would say that my first recommendation or my first thing to say is that you need to respect that your husband needs space like he needs to have his own his own time and his own space and every obviously every relationship is different but i think it puts a lot of pressure on someone if you need them to be around you all the time and you also need them to give you like reassurance that they want to be with you all the time. I think that's a lot of pressure to put on someone. And when you when you put that pressure on someone, I feel like it almost can breed resentment. So if he's asking if he's if he's asking for space, you need to respect that and you need to give it to him and I feel like you will also find that when you you're not you'll you almost find that like you're not giving him space, but you're gonna event you're gonna also want the space you're like you're gonna start really liking and kind of enjoying the time apart because when you come back come back together it'll almost be better but you need to kind of switch how you view oh i'm giving my husband space uh, you need to view it as like we're taking some time apart to like work on ourselves or to you know keep ourselves happy and fulfilled anything else you want to add to that 
It's a really good point. Um, Joey just said he's not asking for space because he doesn't love you. He's asking for space because he does love you. And again, you shouldn't feel hurt by it because it's not, he's not hurting you. He's not asking for space because he doesn't want to hang out with you or anything. He just needs some time to himself or to hang out with his boys or whatever he needs to do. That's like a totally human thing. You can't be with someone 24 seven. I love Joey a lot. And if I was with him 24 seven, I would kill him, murder him. Okay, the next question is how not to let your own self-worth be determined by your relationship or your partner. How to love someone while, how to love yourself while loving someone else. I feel like I've also talked about this in a video, like I am a firm believer that you cannot love someone properly and fully until you love yourself. I don't think that you should really be in a relationship until you can say that you are comfortable with yourself and you love yourself. The question is how to not let your own self-worth be determined by your by your relationship and it's just like you just don't. Like you, that should never your self-worth isn't determined by your relationship with anyone. It's not determined by anything else other than what you put on yourself. If that makes sense. It is just you and yourself out there. And I think if you if you are ha if you're struggling with that, then I think you need to take some time to like to really like sit with yourself and like think and and process and like do some some soul searching and some deep thinking and honestly maybe see someone to like talk it through because I am a firm believer that you really need to love yourself before you're in a relationship because I don't think that you can love someone fully and wholly and properly unless you love yourself. If the person's tr keep continuously trying to like make you feel a certain way or make you feel happy and filled, it's just never gonna work. It's just, you need to make yourself feel like that. They can make you feel loved, obviously, like they should make you feel loved and wanted and secure, but you, they can't put value on you and you can't let them put value on you because you need to put your own value and worth on yourself. The next one is how to stay independent and continue pursuing your career like a boss ass bitch, even when your significant other may not be in the same field or may not be 100% on board with projects that you are working on. I guess finding a balance between what you want and what your partner wants and knowing where to draw the line when compromise be and when compromise becomes submission. So I first read this and I was like, well, I just wouldn't be with someone who wasn't on board with what I do. Um, then I talked to Joey about it and he made some fair points. Do you want to re remind me? I basically think you just need to have like an open and honest conversation with your with your, your person that you're with. You need to ask them like why. You need to find out why they're not supporting you, what aspects they're not supporting, and then maybe try to understand and explain to them like your views. But in the end, like it's your career and it's your life. and. Unless like, sometimes your career just like has to take over. Like Joey and I are both well aware that like right now in our lives, our careers are very important and they take priority over a lot of things. But we've had that conversation and we have that communication. I think that's just what you need to, you need to talk to the person that you're with and tell them where, what, where and why and where you're at. And they need to tell you why and where they're at and why they don't maybe support you. But in the end, like it is your life and it's your career. And like, I, they need to like, they need to support you in, in your decisions because you know what's best for you. I can't really say what it's like when you have kids. I don't have kids, so we'll talk about that, you know, in 10 years, but um, this is just like when you're in a relationship where it's just like you and the person, not when there's children involved. I think that's a whole different conversation um, that we can talk about in 10 years. <laughs> so those are the three questions. Um, those are my three points, four points. And the last thing I kind of just want to quickly touch on is like, is therapy. And I think therapy for yourself is like so important. I've been to therapy, Joey's been to therapy. Everyone in my family has, most people in my family have been to therapy at one point in their life. It's just like really great to talk things out, to get an outsider's perspective to get a professional's perspective, help you work through things. Like I definitely learned things in therapy about myself, my relationships and you know, my past through talking to a professional. I don't think there's anything to be ashamed of. And then I think also like I, there's a ton of couples who have been together for a long period of time or are married or whatever that go to couples therapy all the time. And I, I see nothing wrong with that. I think there is so much value in having someone help you through your relationship they're tough, like relationships are tough and they're work and you need to spend a lot of time and effort in them. So I think that seeking therapy is like 
probably one of the best things that you can do for yourself as a human. Don't know if I mentioned this at the beginning, but BetterHelp does actually um, do couples therapy as well. So that's a really great option. If you don't want to go see someone, you could do it online, video chat, or you can just do the like back and forth online. So thank you so much to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. I hope you guys found it enjoyable. Comment down below if you have any thoughts, concerns, how you keep your own independence in a relationship. Um, and I will be doing the breakup one uh, soon. You can leave questions about breakups if you want down below and I will uh, put them in my next, in that video. Other than that, thanks so much for watching. Love you all, peace and love, bye.